Okay, again, we are doing a series on Python 3, uh, which I am in. I'm currently using Python 3.3.2. Um, and this was a request from my viewers that I do this series. There should be an annotation on the screen that will bring you to the full playlist. I recommend watching the previous videos before you continue on this if you haven't already. I'm releasing a new video every Wednesday, uh, and uh, it is... 2013 now. If uh, you're watching this in the future, the full playlist may, may be done. If you're still watching this in 2013, early 2014, I might still be working on the list. So if the video, if the list is seems to be at an end but not complete, you know, come back in a week. So with that out of the way, today uh, we are going to look at writing to files. Uh, you know, the, the first things I like to do when any programming language I'm learning or when I'm teaching, I want to learn how to uh, output stuff to the screen, which we've done, save stuff to variables, get user input, put it to variables, and then for now that we've done that, we want to be able to store that information we're retrieving from the user somewhere. So that's what we're going to work on today. We're going to work on storing data into a file. And then next week, we're going to look at reading from that file. So uh, the way this is going to work is we are going to use the open function. Um, and we want to put that into an object. So we're going to say f as our object. You can call it something else. It's common to call it f when working with a file, but maybe you're going to be accessing multiple files in your script when you get down to using a script. So know that that doesn't have to be f. That's just uh, common, especially when it comes to tutorials. Um, also, I'm working in the interpreter here. Uh, probably three more videos or so, two or three more videos, and we'll actually start putting everything we've learned into an actual script that you can save and share and run. So anyway, uh, f. f equals something. It's, it's going to be an object. It's going to be a file object, and we're going to open a file. Okay, so we're going to open a file. We're going to use the function open, and we're going to say inside... Uh, quotes or quotes single or double uh, the name of the file and I'll just call it uh, file.txt uh, and since I'm not giving it a full path name it's going to be saved in whatever directory I'm working in and if you look right up here I'm currently in my temp directory so I'm going to be creating a file called text now the next thing we need to do is tell uh, we're opening the file but how where are we opening it for so comma and then it's still inside the the parentheses we got quotations here we have three options w r and a and first one we're going to look at is w w means write we're going to write to a file uh, the r if we use the r would be we're reading the file and a means appending and we'll get into that in a moment so i'm saying w here we're going to write to a file and what that means is if the file doesn't exist we're going to create it and if it does exist, we're going to overwrite it. So if there's something in there, it's going to overwrite it. And it doesn't give you a warning. You know, that's up to you when you're writing your code. If you want to make some sort of warning if the file exists. Because right now, if file.txt exists and we go to write to it, it's not going to go, hey, that file exists. Are you sure you want to overwrite it? It's not going to do that. You're the programmer. That's your job. Uh, so we're not going to get into the warning stage. Just be warned that if you don't put that into your program, your program's just going to overwrite that file. So we've created this f object. So now that f object, that file object, uh, can do stuff. And what we're going to say here is we're going to say file dot or f dot write, and then we're going to say parentheses. And inside the parentheses, we're going to give it what we want to write to the file. And it's going to be a string. It can either be a regular string or a string of variable. So here I am going to put in, in quotations, either single or double, I'm going to say, this is my test, exclamation mark. Boom, and it gives us the number 16. What does the number 16 mean? Well, we have 16 characters, but each character is a byte, so it's actually saying 16 bytes. When you're working with strings, the bytes are going to be the same number of the characters. There's other things you can write to files, obviously, uh, that may not correlate like that. But you'll see, right now, we've create our file object, we've opened it to write to it, we wrote to it, now we need to close that file. So we're just going to say f close and parentheses and the file is now closed. Now let's go have a look at that. I'm going to hit control D to get out of my Python interpreter. I'm now at my shell. Uh, if you're on Windows, you're going to be in your CMD shell most likely, uh, Linux, Mac, uh, other 
you know, BSD or whatever, you're probably going to be in bash or whatever your default shell is. I'm going to use the cat command to display the contents of a file. If you're on Windows, it's the type command. You would say type in the name of the file or just open it in Notepad. You know, you can use whatever text editor you want, but I'm just going to quickly say cat. The name of our file was file.txt. When I hit enter, there we go. It has the contents. Now you might go, oh, what's this little percent mark there? That's actually my command prompt. Uh, because we did not put a new line at the end of our file, and we'll get into that in a moment. But I also want to say, uh, show you, I'm going to list out the file in Windows. Uh, it's the same as saying DIR. I'm not always going to tell Windows users what to do, but I figure in these earlier tutorials I might. Um, but I'm going to say list file.txt, uh, you know, and dash LHA means, uh, you know, show all in a list, and H means human readable as far as file size. And you see the 16 right there? That's the file size, in this case, in bytes. And, of course, it is 16 bytes because it put in exactly what we told it to. Let's go back. I'm going to hit up arrow a few times. Let's go back into our Python interpreter. Now, let's do the same thing we did before. I'm going to say create an object, uh, an F object, a file object. And I'm going to say file.txt, comma, and then I'm going to say w. So we're, we're going to write to it again. Now again, using write will either create the file or completely override it. So when I hit enter here and I say f dot write and I give it a new string, I'll say this is it, exclamation mark. And this time we have 11 characters or 11 bytes. And then I say f, and we're going to close our file object. I'll hit control D to get out of our interpreter. And if I say list out the files again and list that file, you'll see now it is a 11 bytes. And if we cat out file, it now contains the new content. So once again, it does not warn you that you're overwriting because you're the one programming this. It's up to you. If you're writing a program that does this and you want to ask the user, you want to check if the file exists and ask the user, it's up to you to put that into your script. So. Going back into our interpreter, we're going to go into the next step of this tutorial, and we're going to create the, I'm going to hit control L to clear the screen here. Uh, so I'm going to say, create a file object, create the F, I'm going to say open, and again, I'm going to say file.txt, comma, and inside the quotations, instead of W, I'm going to say A, which means append. We're adding to what the file already uh, has. But as I said before, I didn't put a new line character. So there is, there's not going to be a new line character unless I put it there. Because when it said 11 bytes, 11 characters, that's all it is. And if there was new line and enter, like we're moving down to a new line, there's a character in there. There's bytes taken up that, that represent that. We didn't have that. So if I say f.write, and then inside parentheses say um, new data, doesn't matter if that is capital. It says, okay, we just added eight bytes to that, eight characters to that. And again, file close, control D. And if I list out that, you can now see that it's 19 bytes because it was 11 and we added eight. But it's all going to be on the same line because we never once put in a new line character. So I can say, uh, cat out that file to read that file. Again, this is this cat command is in the, in, in, from the operating system. This is not part of Python. We'll get into reading the file later on. And you can see, this is it, exclamation mark, new data. And there's not even a space there, because a space is a byte. A space is a character. So let's go back into our Python here. And again, I'll say, uh, I'm going to cheat. And I'm just going to copy this real quick and paste it instead of typing it out. I'm going to go back to W. I'm going to overwrite the whole file here. And I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to say f dot write. And in here, I'm going to say this is line one. Then I'm going to say backslash n, which represents new line character. It's not going to actually put a backslash n into the file. It's going to put a new line character. So we'll hit enter there. And you'll see it says 15. We got 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and the 15, it's not 1, 2, it's one character, new line character, that's why we have 15, not 16. We're going to say F, close, 
Don't forget the parentheses. Control D to get out of the interpreter. And I'm going to say cat out our file. And you can see it looks the same, but you notice that that little percent there isn't there. You may or may not have that percent there, depending on what uh, shell program you're using. Because again, that was my prompt there. In fact, uh, I'm using Z shell now. If you're actually using bash, this, your prompt is going to be up here. Z shell is smart enough to go, oh, you know, uh, well, in the other instance. In this instance, it will be down here. But before we put that new line character, a lot of shells, the, the prompt would be up here. Just as a heads up if it looked different for you. So we put that new line in there. There's nothing on the second line. There, there really is no second line. They're just a character at the end of the first line saying, go down one from here on out. So now we're going to say Python 3 to go back into our Python interpreter. And again, I'm going to say F. We're going to create our file object. I'm going to say open. I'm going to say file.txt, comma. And this time I'm going to append to it. And I'm going to say file.write. And I'm going to write to it, uh, this is line 2. And I'm going to put a space there, but no new line. I'm not going to put a new line. I'm going to say f.close. So, so uh, again, f is an object, and the object actually has some built-in functions, this file object. Write is one of them, close is another. So let's get out of our interpreter again, and I'm going to cat out our file. And you can see, this is line 1, this is line 2. Uh, and again, that percent there is because there was no new line there. If you're using uh, some other shells other than Z shell, it's probably going to have your whole prompt up here. In fact, just to show you that, I'm going to go into bash here for a second, and I'm going to cat out the file.txt. And you can see in bash um, that my prompt is actually all on this line. Again, Z shell, it's just the way I have it set up. It goes, oh, you know what, that, that, that command's done running. I'm going to go down to a new line, but for some reason it still leaves the percent there. So in bash, you're not going to have that percent there. You're going to have the whole prompt. Um, so let me go back into my Z shell uh, and go back into Python 3 here. So now, again, just to show you another example, I'm going to say open. We're going to say file.txt comma, and we're going to say A to append. Now, you remember, if we didn't put a new line before, we can, and we write another, more information to it, not another line, but more information to it, we're appending to it, I can say, this is still line 2. Enter F dot close parentheses. Get out of our interpreter again, control D there. And if I cat it out now, you'll see that it says, this is line one, this is line two, this is still line two because we didn't put a new line character in. So be aware, you can also put the new line character in other parts. Again, just as another example, a little repetitive each time, a little different here, just to show you differences. Oops, F equals open. And then we're gonna run the open function here. We're gonna say file.txt, txt comma, and we're gonna say, append to it f dot write and I know there wasn't a new line character so maybe I'll say new line this is line three new line this is line four uh, four new line this is line five and I'll finish it with a new line so I personally it, it, depend, it depends on what you want to do whether you want to put that new line there or not so we added all that. We'll f.close our file, get out of the interpreter, and now when I cat it out, you can see that it actually printed up each one of those on a new line because of those backslash ends. So now you might be asking again, well, what if I want to say backslash n? Well, when you're using uh, the double quotes there, um, anytime you're going to use a backslash, you got to use two backslashes to indicate that it's a backslash. So just as an example, I'll say f equals open, and I'll say file.txt, comma, and we're going to append to it, and I'll say f.write, and then I'll say uh, this is not a new line, 
and I will say backslash backslash n enter. Okay, so let, let's just for fun count this. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, not 26, because this first backslash does not get put into the file. It's just telling it that there, this is a backslash. And that's why we only have 25. Even though we typed out 26 characters, 26 bytes, this one's actually not being put into the file. It's just indicating that the next one, next backslash is a backslash. So F dot close. Control D to get out of that, and we'll cat out file.txt. Now we do that, you can see that it printed up this new line rather than having a new line character. Now I could have done backslash backslash n backslash n, and it would have printed this backslash n and put a new line, and then I wouldn't have that percent sign there. So that's it. I know that I kind of went over the same thing a few times, just showing different examples. I just trying to trying to think of questions you might have. If you, you know, if I'm, if you, if I was a brand new programmer watching this, what questions I would have, and uh, pro problems, troubles I might run into, so I try to hit them all. So we looked at writing to a file, which would either completely overwrite a file or create it if it doesn't exist, and appending to a file, which will add to it right wherever the end of the file is. Next week we'll start looking into reading from a file. Uh, and uh, there's different ways you can read different parts of files. So that's what we'll start working on soon. And then, uh, and then once we get that done, we'll put all that we've learned in these past uh, four or five tutorials into an actual script we'll, where, where we'll ask the, we'll, we'll have a, a little introduction, welcome screen, ask the user a question, take that information, put it into a file that we can later on retrieve in the script. So. Because when you create a variable, that variable's only there while the program's running. Once the program closes, that variable's cleared out. Uh, should be cleared out. Once again, we're using Python. That take, Python takes care of all that stuff for you. Uh, if you're writing in a uh, lower level language like C, uh, you'd have to actually clear out the memory space yourself. Um, so, anyway. Without getting into that, <laughs> um, I hope that you're enjoying these tutorials because you, as viewers, voted for Python 3 tutorials, and I'm giving you what you want. Again, there should be an annotation on the screen that leads to the playlist, so you can watch all the videos in the playlist once they're posted. I'm posting a new one every Wednesday, so again, if you're watching this in the future, they probably should all be up. If you're watching this as I'm posting them, there'll be a new one every Wednesday. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of them. Also, be sure to check out my Monday and Friday videos videos uh, that I'm currently doing on other topics and uh, be sure to like this video you know you guys told me you want Python continue showing me your love for Python by liking these tutorials and also commenting nice comments below uh, and if again if you have something mean to say and you really feel like you have to say it feel free to comment that below as well try to say it nicely um, although again uh, I don't read all the comments. I have lots of videos out. I get lots of comments. I don't have time to read them all. I try to pick some at random and read them occasionally. So I, I do appreciate when you comment. I do like seeing the comment numbers go up. Don't feel offended if I don't answer. If you do want to talk to me, uh, you can check out my IRC channel. Go to my website, filmsatchris.com. That's Chris with a K. And there's 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 social networking stuff as well as the IRC channel, places where you can uh, post stuff as well. Facebook, Google+, Twitter, that sort of stuff. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a great day.